I want to, we're really pleased to have Terry Watt from uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma to be our presenter today. So many of you know and will recognize Terry as being the husband of Diane Watt. They are a team and are faithful participants in our annual Wichita Postcard Club shows every October. I have heard Terry say several times that Diane is the postcard collector. And while she was busy for shopping for cards for her collection, Terry thought, wow, I believe I'll start collecting Disney postcards. Well, I have left out some of the segments there, but anyway, he did that. And one thing led to another, and very soon both Terry and Diane were going through dealer stocks and adding to their individual collections. In 2011, just 10 years ago, we had Disney postcards as a show theme at the Wichita show. And Terry gave us a colorful and thorough look at his collection of postcards that were issued starting in 1955 up to the present time at, you know, 10 years ago, when the first Disneyland in California opened. And he's going to tell us how many more there are today. Think back to those days when many of us were racing home from school, putting on our mouse ears and watching the Mickey Mouse Club on black and white television. All of this sets the stage for today's presentation and Terry's investigation and searching for pre-1955 Disney postcards. Please join me in welcoming Terry Watt from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, folks, uh, so nice to see that you've all turned out uh, to, uh, to hear me talk about uh, really one of my passions. And uh, I'm looking forward so much to sharing some information with you about Disney cards. Now, the um, subjects I'm going to be covered today, um, I'm not going to be talking this time about uh, Disneyland and the parks. I mean, the parks has, have exploded. Uh, when I started collecting, there was a Disneyland and a Disney, in Disney World, there was um, the Magic Kingdom and I think Epcot then, and I think Tokyo Disney had started. Now there are 12 parks worldwide, uh, and if you're a collector of the parks, the subject matter just keeps growing and growing. But let me tell you a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, when most people think about collecting Disney postcards, they think about uh, Disneyland immediately. That's what they think of because there are so many collectors focus on that. Uh, and I'm going to mention that briefly in connection with how I got my start, uh, although that's really not the focus. Uh, my focus is on what uh, uh, I've got a, a friend that apparently some of you would know, uh, Tom DeLuca, and I think some time ago we started calling these postcards that were published before the parks opened, we started calling those classic Disney postcards. So that's really what the focus is going to be. So uh, after my description of how I got started, um, I'll move on to these other subjects. Now, a subtitle for this talk might have been uh, Disney collecting segments I'm interested in today. Uh, tomorrow it might be different, but uh, the uh, the short subjects. So these are these cartoons that were published uh, beginning with Steamboat Willie in 1928. Uh, there were a series, a lot of Mickey Mouse cartoons uh, that were released, and early on I sort of formed the hypothesis that the earliest Disney postcards in Europe were probably shaped or influenced by these very early uh, cartoons. And I formed that pretty early, and so I've sort of been watching for it my whole collecting career. And uh, uh, I've got some cards that I think make the case that uh, that, that is, in fact, uh, true. Um, the second thing I'm going to talk about are incidental Mickeys. I don't know. That's what I call them. Um, I think Cole Woodbury called these cards of desperation. And those are cards that, that uh, when you quit finding Disneyland cards or Disney World cards, you broaden your collection out in desperation looking for something else. But that's how I got started on those. But incidental Mickeys are just a, a term that I give to 
photographs of people that have Disney characters in them. And you, if you collect real photo cards, you've probably seen uh, many pictures of children that were taken with a favorite postcard. Oh, sorry, <laughs> favorite toy. And uh, if that toy happens to be a, a Disney character, then it's a card of interest for me. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to talk about uh, a pretty recent interest of mine, which is pre-World War II Japanese Disney cards. Uh, this is an area that I really didn't know much about until maybe a year or a year and a half ago. Uh, and I just wanted to share with you uh, what I had learned. Uh, and notice I say Q and I hope A. And the reason is, uh, you know, like uh, my knowledge of postcards in general is probably like a mile wide and an inch deep. I know a fair amount about Disney cards, but boy, there's a lot I don't know. So hopefully if you ask questions, I can answer them for you. There you go. All right. So how I got my start is first over here on the left is actually a card that's uh, published by Valentine and, and uh, Sons. You may have heard of Valentine if you collect more traditional uh, postcards. Um, this is a series of numbered birthdays that goes from one to 10. And there are four or five series like this that go from one to 10. There's a Mickey, I think there are two Mickey series. There's a Snow White series, something that maybe looks like a Donald series, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just using those as little markers as I go forward. Uh, you actually see, even though they're not postcards, you actually occasionally see them stamped and mailed. So most postcard collectors who collect in Europe We'll uh, consider those postcards and collect them. All right, so here's my start, my genesis, how I got started collecting Disney postcards. The uh, Walt Disney World postcard you see there is the very first postcard I bought January 10th, 2000. Now, that should probably tell you something about me. When I buy a postcard, I keep pretty detailed records of every postcard, and I started early. Uh, so it wasn't a big, I didn't have the problem of going back with hundreds or thousands of postcards and trying to catch up. I started very early. So um, I'm actually able to say with some confidence that on January 10th, 2000, I bought that card. It also cost $2 because I keep track of that. I bought three more at the park the next year. Uh, and actually, my wife and I have gone to Disney World yearly for some time. And then in October 26th, I bought the first, my first foreign postcards. It was uh, 12 Valentine and Sons postcards that looked more or less like that. And I remember asking the uh, dealer at the market, he didn't know anything about them either, but I said, is this all of them? I mean, is this all the postcards there are that are made outside the US? Of course, he didn't know, uh, but I bought them anyway. Now, the reason I asked that, and this is gonna show up again in a minute, is I'm kind of a completionist. I like to complete things. So when I came upon this book in 2003, the sum total of my Disney postcards were about a dozen. And I found this book called The Nickel Tour, 2003. It was published in 2000. And it has this bold statement in the introduction. It says they're all represented here, arranged in consecutive order, every single Disneyland postcard from 1954 till today. It's 400 pages long. It's got hundreds of postcards pictured in it. It's the definitive reference and it's out of print obviously, but it's often available on eBay for money. But that book sort of naively got me into collecting Disney cards because I thought, look, here's something I can complete. All I have to do, let me put some air quotes on that. All I have to do is get all the cards in this book and I'm done. But this is a wonderful book. It's a coffee table book with hundreds of Disneyland postcards pictured and many more listed that are not pictured. Uh, at the end of every chapter, there is a, a listing of all the cards in the chapter, including cards that are not pictured. So if you look at the left-hand column, I hope you can read that. It's large enough to read. But if you look at the left-hand column, there's a number. They start at 0228. If you look at... Um, uh, 0230B, as in Baker, it says Main Street Station, not pictured. So even cards that were not pictured in here, and there are a lot, are listed. So it is a definitive reference. And I think collectors, since this book was published, have, with very few exceptions, uh, agreed that this book is more or less a comprehensive listing of the Disneyland postcards. And this is just an example of how that checklist is used by collectors. Sometimes on eBay, you'll see experienced uh, sellers of uh, Disneyland cards identify a card by the number. Like this card, uh, Walt Disney, uh, is identified as num number uh, NT0228. 
And it, in the stamp box, it has an A1, which is the second column there. It's not the first card published. It was probably the, well, I don't know if that, they're actually sequential, but the, this would be under this uh, listing, the 227th card published, 228th. Uh, but in any case, it was not the first one, and some dealers seem to, uh, I will misrepresent that by accident. But the thing you need to know is those books would not have existed without the things, the um, uh, checklist that I've circled there at the bottom of the book. The 2000 uh, second edition year, 2000 uh, second edition was based on the 1993 first edition. Both of them would not have come into existence if it hadn't been for the checklist that I've got pictured on the right, uh, which uh, was uh, collected uh, by uh, Roger LaRoque and Nick Farrago. A checklist and historical guide. The books would not have existed because of that. Now, if you've been to a Wichita postcard show, not so much in the last few years, but for a long time before that, um, Nick Farrago, who was the co-author of this checklist, was there. And that's where I met him. And uh, I, I'm sad to report that uh, he passed away in 2019. Uh, and I just wanted to give a little tip of the hat because unbeknownst to him, and he didn't know this and I didn't know it, I bought the book because of the checklist. The books existed because of the checklists. So my entry into Disney postcards uh, can be pretty directly related to Nick. So Nick, uh, wish you were still here, but you're not. One of the things that's interesting that Nick told me, and this is also in the, uh, in the introduction to one of the books or one of the acknowledgements, I asked, him, I asked Nick one time, how do you put together a checklist like this? And he said that there was a gentleman who lived close to Disneyland and he and his wife visited there twice a week and they bought every new postcard they saw. Further, these cards were stored in the order they bought them, a chronological listing of every postcard that was sold in Disneyland for the period of time that they went there. And if you are a collector, you know, what a gold mine this is if you're trying to put together a checklist. Well, Roger bought the collection and then Tim teamed up with Nick, put out the checklist uh, that they published in this book. And I'll say that countless hobbyists have become Disney land and more broadly Disney world and Disney period postcard collectors because of this. Uh, so I just wanted Nick to be recognized for his contribution. Okay. All right. So short subjects, Disney short subjects and early postcards in Europe. All right. So now we get to actual postcards. I'm going to let you I, hopefully this works. If uh, it doesn't work, let me know and I'll just zoom on past it. If you may need to turn the sound up on your computer, this is a little piece of video of uh, movie history. Yeah, this was one of the first cartoons that had synchronized sound music and sound effects. It was an enormous hit. It's hard to, for us to understand what an impact this cartoon had when it was released on November 18th, 1928. Now, the earliest known postmarked Disney postcard in Europe was February 28th, 1930. So from 1918. November 18th, 1928 to February 28th, 1930, pretty much all that was known in Europe of Mickey Mouse, they was learned through these short cartoons. This is, this is my hypothesis early on, and I, I think at least I'll make an argument for it here. Uh, the earliest known uh, postmark postcard was a German publisher. As far as I know, there are no early Steamboat Willie postcards. All right, so Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was issued in 1937. Uh, the uh, Mickey uh, Steamboat Willie was introduced, was uh, released in 1928. Notice that was released. You know, you got postcards starting up in 1930. There was no internet then. You know, how did people communicate? How did we get the, well, somebody took the movie over to, to Europe and to Japan and other places. So in 1928, the company started the first major movie was released in 1937. So what did Disney do in the meantime? They turned out these short cartoons. Mickey, between 1928 and 1950, was the subject of 128 cartoons. 
And they also produced 75 cartoons called the Silly Symphonies. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those in a minute. And then there's a listing of some of the others they did. But they turned out a total of almost 500 short cartoons. They tended to be about seven minutes long. And they were literally, literally run as short subjects before major motion pictures. Here's a listing of the earliest Mickey short subjects beginning in 1928. Steamboat Willie was actually produced third, but released first. Plain Crazy and the Galloping Gaucho were produced earlier, but then released after the success of Steamboat Willie. Now, the first uh, short subject released in 1930 was released in March. It was called Just Mickey. And the first earliest postmarked postcard was February 28, 1930. So, where did the early publishers get their inspiration for their postcards? Well, probably from the short subjects. Uh, by the way, uh, a few years ago, uh, 2001 and 2002, more than a few maybe, uh, Disney released the uh, box sets of the uh, black and white Mickey cartoon. So I was able to put together, I was able to pretty, just, pretty well justify some of my theories using that. Now a little terminology. I mentioned Tom DeLuca and some of you know him, but um, he came up with this general idea and I've sort of modified it a bit, but so you'll know where this talk is focused going forward. Um, Disney postcards from 1928 to 1937 up into Snow White. Uh, we just called the early classic period. And then as we go from 1937 to 1955, we called that the early animated feature film period, because once the once Snow White begins to come out and Snow White and um, Pinocchio and others, then the card subject matters begin to change in, for a lot of the major publishers. And also some other characters begin to appear. And then the uh, modern or theme park era began in 1955 and uh, continues through today and the 12 Disney theme parks that are out there. All right. So. It's a mouse, but it's, is it Mickey? As we begin to look before 1955, sometimes we see things that don't exactly look like Mickey Mouse, but sort of resemble him in some way. The card on the right was, was uh, presented, was uh, uh, drafted by a, uh, an artist. Uh, I'm going to call him Ms. Trisky. You can see his signature there on the lower right of the right-hand card. Um, uh, he was Hungarian. I'll have some more of his cards later. But um, it looks as though that should be Mickey Mouse. So why do I say it was intended to be Mickey Mouse? And sometimes things that sort of look like him weren't intended that way, and sometimes they are. Well, if you look at the sort of hallmarks or features that I look for, you know, you have the widow's peak in his hairline, you have pie eyes, and that usually means old. Now, the gloves on the hand are usually light colored for visibility. The oldest postcards often had five fingers, but the Others sometimes would have four, sometimes would have five. But if you see five fingers, it's probably an old postcard. Solid black body, two buttons on the short pants, oversized shoes, and a rat-like tail that was dropped later. Uh, but although I see it still gets picked up occasionally. But so if you look at those features, you can see that the features are there, but maybe in a distorted form. Now, here's what Mickey looked like very early on. Plain Crazy was the first Mickey uh, cartoon that was developed. Again, it was not the first one released. Uh, and in this particular case, notice that Mickey has black hands. He doesn't have white uh, and then uh, isn't wearing well, uh, light colored gloves. That was fixed later. But notice that uh, Mickey in both of these stills that I took from the videos um, has five fingers. If you watch the entire plain crazy cartoon, you'll see that sometimes he has five and sometimes he has four. And that's the same way with the Gallop and Gaucho. Now, this is why this is the card that really got me started on this question of uh, wow, look at this. This card got Mickey defacing other actors post posters. And, and you, I had never seen that. I was collecting the parks. I came on to this card and I said, this is so out of character. This is probably published 1931 to 1933. By the way, the dates I'm going to give you are the best I know. I have no idea if anybody knows for sure. You can let me know, but sometimes they're based on postmarks. Sometimes they're based on handwritten things. Sometimes they're dates from the seller. Sometimes it's what somebody told me. So I'll just put that uh, caveat right now. And what was sort of interesting to me is you'll notice that the back of the card said copyright reserved Mickey Mouse film distributed. So that sort of gives some indication that perhaps Disney approved of this. Now, 
that's what really led me to ask the question, where did these foreign publishers, these very early foreign publishers, get the idea that Mickey was as worldly, when I say worldly, I'm going to show you in a minute, smoking, drinking, fighting, whatever, as he appears in these other cards. And I think the answer is they were watching these early cartoons. All right, so here uh, on the left is a frame from the Gallop and Gaucho, Mickey drinking alcohol. That was reflected by all of these cards. The uh, Hegelberg card, which is the top center, uh, not this card, but the French version of this card has the same image, but with French uh, language. This one is blank. Uh, it says the stars of dry America. Uh, prohibition was ended in 1933, so perhaps this was some sort of... Uh, nudge, wink, wink, nudge, nudge at the celebrities in America who were able to ignore uh, prohibition and go ahead and drink. Um, Mickey has five fingers in the card on the left, this is Trisky card, again, the same artist I talked about before, uh, in the bottom center card, uh, and also the top card and the right card. All of these examples, Mickey has five fingers, and they're all, all very early. Smoking. Mickey smokes. Who would have thought? All right, here's another little clip for you. Turn your uh, sound up if you need it. This is the Galloping Gaucho. Again, this was 1928, a very early postcard. Oh, sorry, movie. Okay, uh, ARIB dated 1931, uh, very early postcard. You show you see him smoking there. Also, the 1936 postmark with the, in the center top. Um, you see Mickey with a stamp for color, and you, you, people who collect postcards see that in other subjects. That's not a big deal. The one on the bottom is kind of interesting. Uh, the Google translation, and by the way, all of my translations will be from Google. Uh, seasickness on land. It looks as though Mickey is not holding up very well with a cigar there, although he seems to be doing fine in the postcard on the far, far right, which is Wollstone, uh, probably published, uh, published between 1930 and 1933. Uh, three blind mice, uh, wonderful postcard. And the bottom, uh, again, is Hegelberg, which we'll see um, pop up again. All right, smoking. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, in trouble with the law. Now, back to the galloping gaucho. Notice there's a reward for him there, a uh, reward for Mickey Mouse. He's about ready to jump in. I didn't identify him, but again, this is a frame from the Galloping Gaucho. If you look at the two cards published by Inner Art, uh, 1930 to 1933, uh, you for me and me for you is being chased by the police. It was a cat, and it may be four years and it may be forever. So uh, here we have, see Mickey in trouble with the law. And by the way, these publishers did not I had to look, I had to pick these out because the publishers usually uh, publish a series of 24 cards or 12, and maybe one or two of them would be uh, some sort of activity like this. The Chain Gang, Chain Gang, 1930. I've got a little still of that, which is funny. Or a little video. There we have the ever irrepressible Mickey Mouse. Um, notice that the card to the immediate right is Bistrisky again, one of my favorites. Um, and then I'll talk about the other card in a second. Um, these were actually issued in a set of 24 with a wrapper. And um, earlier this year, a set in the original wrapper went up on an auction site. Um, and oh, these were probably published about 1930 to 1931, but a full set uh, and the original wrapper came up on a Hungarian auction site. Uh, and I have all the faces, so I did put in a bid, but the, uh, the final bid on this set was an incredible 230,000 
Hungarian forums, which is about 700 bucks. They outbid me because I already had all the faces and I just wanted the uh, wrapper, but uh, I had to console myself. I was outbid. I had to console myself with a, a nice scan of it. They were the uh, auction site produced that. The other postcard is from a set, not a set, there are nine known faces. And I just uh, brought up the one of the cards in this series that says Mickey at St. Cyr. Um, uh, by the way, I'll be saying French, German, Japanese words, and you know, thanks to Hooked on Phonics, there's no telling how they're going to come out. Uh, if you, um, so I'll be pronouncing them probably phonetically. If I get it wrong, we'll just you have to excuse me. Uh, these cards apparently came from Saint Cyr, which is a French military academy. Now, the other cards in the series, there's nine are known that usually show military related scenes. Uh, they're all sort of photographically reproduced and very light toned probably the early 1930s. But again, this is Mickey in prison. Swords and Knives, Galloping Gaucho, 1928. Uh, you see Mickey killing Mickey. And again, another Bistrisky uh, postcard, which I really like. At the bottom there, you notice that uh, Mickey is stabbing a police officer in, uh, in the rear with a knife. And on the far right, you have the sharpening of the razor it takes a long time. Uh, Mr. Mickey Mouse is anxious and fearful. That's a Google translation of uh, that postcard. Now, one of the things these two, card, two of these cards point out is early on, it wasn't clear whether it was Mickey Mouse or Mickey Mice. So sometimes you see multiple Mickey Mice in a postcard uh, because it seemed they seemed to think it was a generic for, uh, for sort of mischievous mice. Mickey at War, Barnyard Battle, 1929. You see Mickey firing a machine gun at some cats that are invading. Uh, the postcards again uh, to the right are from uh, St. Cyr. Um, the, um, one of them was sort of interesting when I got the one that's at the top, the rightmost card. I wondered what in the world is going on? So I did a little research and I came up with this. It looks as though Mickey is using an American uh, artillery range finder which again points to the sort of uh, military related nature of this uh, St. Cyr French military academy. Again, these uh, nine cards, extremely rare. Um, like I said, I know of nine. I don't have all nine between Tom DeLuca and I. Uh, I think we figured out there were nine. This is probably the first card I found that I thought I could actually point to um, one of these short subjects and say, yeah, somebody watched this short subject and actually made a postcard out of it. And you can see you've got Mickey Mouse with a pop gun aiming it at uh, a cat. And then that same uh, general idea is in the postcard that was published by Wollstone in 1930 to 1933. So that was probably the first real evidence I had that the short subjects had some influence on the way that these earliest publishers pictured Mickey. There's something interesting about the Barnyard Battle. It was actually banned in Germany. Uh, the German film board said, and I'll read it to you, the wearing of German military helmets by an army of cats which oppose a militia of mice is offensive to national dignity. Permission to exhibit this production in Germany is refused. And I've got some still uh, images from the video below. You see the, the army of, my, of Mickey mice, it looks as though they are. Uh, in the, on the left, in the middle, you see the cats coming with a cannon. On the far right, you see Mickey smashing the heads of cats as they emerge from a trench and throwing them in a pile over to the left. All right, so now let's switch to the Silly Symphonies and see how they influenced postcards. Again, they were made very early. Uh, there's no Mickey and Minnie. They're typically based on old fairy tales, but they're, I like to say they're stories set to music, not stories with background music. Well, here's what Walt Disney had to say about it. Here is your host, Walt Disney. Many of your letters ask us to tell you more about the Silly Symphonies. Actually, the Silly Symphonies were started as an experiment. We used them to test and perfect the color and animation techniques we employed later in full-length feature pictures like Cinderella, Snow White, and Fantasia. The earliest Silly Symphonies date back 20 years or more, but the stories they told are much older than the pictures themselves. 
uh, what I know about the, or actually the scenes that I'm going to show you in the, uh, the follow um, were from the DVD set uh, that Disney issued in 2001 and 2002, which had some of the earliest Silly Symphonies in them. All right. Uh, I am going to show you the first appearance of Donald Duck as a character. Um, this postcard does not, it's by Seferides, a very uh, well-known the Disney people, uh, publisher of postcards uh, in Europe, uh, they're French. And it says by authorization of Disney, well, Disney Mickey Mouse, which presumably means they had a license of some sort. Pro my postmark's 1939. It was probably earlier when the postcard. But here's the first appearance of Donald Duck. I thought you just might want to see what he looked like originally. That's what he looked like in The Wise Little Hen. Um, Toby Tortoise Returns. This was another uh, silly symphony, 1936. And again, not all of the movies represented, but so far I've only seen one tribute to it. Uh, and that's this postcard, uh, Seferides, uh, 19, uh, dated 1938. If you remember the rabbit and the hare, the rabbit and the hare ran a race, uh, the hare lost. Well, this is Toby Tortoise Returns. And this time the uh, rabbit challenges him to a boxing match. So uh, this card seems to be commemorative of that. Um, Mickey was not in that, though. Instead, the referee that it's uh, pictured just now uh, was actually there. All right, so now let's get to some postcards that really are very close uh, to these early silly symphonies. Uh, Valentine and Sons, and I mentioned them earlier, they make the little number things, uh, number cards. Uh, in 1935, Disney published, uh, sorry, released them a movie called The Water Babies. And I've got a still frame from The Water Babies there on the left. In the middle, you see Valentine and Son's interpretation of that. That's pretty close to, um, as close as I could get to something that looked like it was in the postcard. This is a series of six postcards. They were published in 1938 uh, using the Valentine, uh, the, the, the Valentine, uh, system that the, the year is indicated up in the uh, stamp box. Uh, so presumably these were published about 1938. But you see that uh, Valentine, and this was the case with all six of these cards uh, that, that were in this series, uh, Valentine elaborated on that. And, and, and actually, they're beautiful cards. They're beautiful cards if you ever happen to see some in good condition. And, but they've elaborated on the scene from the Water Babies that it was taken from. Uh, the Mer Babies was uh, released in 1938. Uh, Valentine and Sons released uh, their series of six cards that are titled the Mer Baby. Mer Baby Circus Riders, as this card is entitled. But the title of the entire series is the Mer Babies. And as you can see, the postcard reflects pretty strongly uh, the subject matter of the uh, cartoon. And um, again, six cards and uh, follows it pretty closely. Oh yeah, here's another series. Now here's a series that follows the Silly Symphonies much more closely. Uh, on the left is a, a frame from the cartoon. On the right is a postcard that sort of corresponds to it. This is from the Big Bad Wolf in 1934. Uh, you've got Red Riding Hood plus the Three Little Pigs for some reason. There are 12 cards in this series and they're adapted from the cartoon. So this is card number one. Thankfully, they're numbered. Uh, this is card number seven. And I just picked a few to give examples. This is card number 12, and you can see how the postcard subject matter was shaped by the frames of the movie. So that, that was a good one when I found that one. But this was the big payoff coming up. Three Little Pigs cartoon in 1933. I'm showing you a postcard now that was made in Sweden when... Uh, 35 to 40, maybe. Uh, these cards are extremely rare. And they're not that sought after because the subject matter is not Mickey or Minnie or any of the big, big five, the Fab Five, I think as they call them. Uh, no, this was a cartoon uh, about the three little pigs. So I looked, and this is a still frame from the three little pigs. You can see they have literally copied the, uh, this particular frame into the postcard uh, down to kind of the general uh, 
uh, coloring and the, the trees and the wolf and in his bag. And they've made some changes, but I mean, this is spot on. And all the ones I've looked at basically look as though they've copied them from cell, uh, frames of the movie. But that wasn't all. There's actually four series that have the same property. Um, here's the Silly Symphonies. Again, I think they're eight card series, but I don't have eight cards of any of them. I think seven is the most I have. I think they were done in the mid thirties. Um, we have three series that the postcards are down there. There's three different series. The one on the bottom, see on the left is Birds in Spring and then Father Noah's Ark and Santa's Workshop. Literally cop, little literal copies of frames of the movies. So this is probably the strongest uh, proof I have that the early Disney uh, postcards were influenced by uh, films that were made here in the U.S. Oddly enough, I don't know why, uh, Birds in Spring and Santa's Workshop were both flipped horizontally. So when I extracted those frames from the movie, I had to flip them so that they corresponded. But if you look at that, I mean, these are spot on, except for some coloring differences and some very minor details in the background. I mean, they're literal copies. All right, and then as one bonus, this is, I apologize in advance for the stereotype here, but if you collect old postcards, you know this was the time. There's no evidence that Disney approved of this, but uh, I wasn't looking for this. This, uh, I bought the book called Lost on a Desert Island, which has Mickey Mouse cartoons starting about 1930. And I was just thumbing through it and I came upon the uh, comic cell that's there in the middle. I thought, man, that looks exactly like a postcard. And sure enough, I grabbed the postcard and it is, uh, portions of it are literally copied from this, uh, uh, from this cart uh, comic, uh, comic uh, sell. I mean, literally copied. But one sort of interesting thing, and I think I talked to Susan about this. I may have shown her this card. If you look closely, you can see that the subject matter here was the 1935 Brussels Exposition. And, and there's another card in this series where Mickey, I think, is writing in a car that has a license tag on the front, the license plate that says 1935 uh, Exposition. Uh, so uh, apparently um, the publisher uh, knew of this cartoon, this comic uh, book, comic uh, stray, uh, comic cell, <laughs> this series lost on a desert island, and uh, it uh, took one of the <laughs> one of the pictures and turned that into a something to uh, sell in connection with the uh, exposition. So that was just a bonus. I, I suppose there might be another talk there that uh, how did the early Mickey comic strips inf uh, influence postcard uh, early postcards, Bill? That's somewhere down the road. All right, so now let's do incidental Mickeys, which is kind of a fun topic. As Cole Woodbury said, uh, once you sort of fill out your main collection, which for me was Disneyland and Disney World, then you begin to, as you start to find fewer and fewer cards, you branch out. So this was something that I started and it's been a lot of fun to find. Again, these are cards in which they're, they're photographs for other reasons, but they have Disney toys or images in them for some reason or another. So the first uh, set of postcards here, uh, these were commercial series. There's six cards. I don't think I have, well, I think there's six cards. I don't have six cards of any of them because they look so much alike. You know, for the little boy in the middle, sometimes he's standing up and wearing the same thing. Sometimes he's seated. Sometimes Mickey's in the middle of the train. Sometimes it's on the right with the uh, far left postcard. You know, they're painting a picture of Mickey from a book that has Mickey on the cover or a poster or something. And sometimes the books on the floor, sometimes a different person is painting. So unless I pay real close attention, I'm probably not going to complete those for a while. Uh, I keep trying though. And also the one 1937 is different children, which is pretty easy to spot, but sometimes the Mickey doll is somewhere else. Uh, another category that you see uh, occasionally, not a huge number, but uh, sometimes you'll see Disney characters photographed with celebrities. Bridget Bardot on the far left as a child uh, was photographed with some Disney characters. If you look down low, you see a Donald and a Bambi. So, um, uh, so that qualifies as an incidental Mickey. It doesn't have Mickey, but it's the same idea. Uh, Olga, and I won't try to pronounce her last name, uh, is known in the U.S. apparently as the female lead in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Uh, she was photographed with something that looks like Mickey. And again, now we go back to, you know, what are the features we look for? And I think that's probably intended to be Mickey. Far right, Sonia Henning, 
there was a name I recommend, uh, sorry, I, re I remember, Norwegian figure skater and actress. Here are some others, Martha Eggert, she was Hungarian, Marie Francis, she was French, and Susie Carrier, it's sort of a double here. Uh, you get uh, a French actress who's photographed with Pinocchio and Walt Disney, so sort of a double hit on that one. Uh, Pinocchio was released in 1940 and won two Academy Awards, one for Best Music, uh, original score and best music original song and that song was when you wish upon a star and if you go to disneyland or disney world today they still play it for you at times uh, so that's disney with celebrities sometimes you get disney characters photographed by a celebrity i got this card in 2007 and i thought it was interesting because it's got a mickey sitting there i didn't do any research but i assumed without looking that lotta herlich uh, was a german child actress i didn't know about and i believed that up until 2020 when i got this card which has the same name but a different child and so at that point i said well i got to stop and research this it turns out that she was an important female photographer uh, in germany and she got her start doing por family portraits and portraits of children um I, I missed one that was on ebay the other day uh, i got outbid on it but um so they're still out there. They're not horribly rare. Uh, you see them occasionally, but I got outbid. That's the way it goes. I already had two. Um, this is the postcard of the week I talked about. I'm not going to spend much time on it. I just think it's a wonderful card. As I've said during the postcard of the week uh, presentation, um, I'm a wannabe musician and a Disney collector. And when this card came up, I knew it was one I needed. Um, no, that's one I had to have. I didn't need it. Uh, I noticed that it's Arizona Kid and his Texas Rangers. Apparently, they're a band. I mean, when I had the postcard, I didn't know anything. When I just got this, I didn't know. It looks like a band. It could be an acting troupe, I suppose, but they're all, they all have instruments. But notice the names that have been inked in there or been uh, scratched in. Uh, Olive Oil is one, uh, wrong gender, playing stand-up bass. Uh, and you also have Popeye and Wimpy. So I tried to find out things about this postcard, and I thought it was just pretty, an interesting card that was fun. I looked on the floor in front of Smile and Johnny, but I think that's actually a Popeye's instrument. There's a jug there, and as you know, they you know, play a jug sometimes in some bands, uh, and there's something else on top of it. Man, for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. Um, oh, yeah, the... the uh, date another thing i want to figure out is the date about this card and so i looked at the stamp box and kodak made this paper from 1927 to 1940 which doesn't help because it helps a little bit i guess i probably knew it was before 1940. Uh, i blew up the jug and the instrument on top of it and by gum then all of a sudden i figured out what it was it was an antique kazoo so apparently popeye plays a kazoo and then the rest of the talk of the week and the postcard of the week just gets me going through um some other things i found by the way i used a google image search i don't know if you can do this or not if you knew about this or not but one of the options in Google is to give it an image and ask for it to find similar images. And some of the things I'm going to show you now came up like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, this was a postcard. I don't have the original. I get, you know, this is a low resolution reproduction of, I mean, of uh, an, an auction that had lapsed. And the, the way, everything on the right hand side, I'm going to show you now, I don't have. I just got off the internet, usually in low resolution. I did notice that there was some sort of a radio microphone in there. I wanted it to be WCKY, which would uh, would have been the Chicago station, but it wasn't. But uh, it does say on there very clearly, 1939. And it also says, uh, Arizona Kid and the Texas Rangers. And it also says Reading, Pennsylvania, which destroyed one of my theories. I assumed this was a, an Arizona a Southwest band, Arizona or Texas Rangers. The same card said that these, uh, these folks played country Western music, uh, the, the text associated with it. And then I came up with this, um, uh, with this, this was an eight by 10. Again, I don't have the original scan, just a reproduction. And one thing you notice is that the personnel has changed. A lot of the folks from the first first card are not there. Um, and uh, it looks like these two images, the postcard and the 8 by 10 glossy, were taken maybe in the same place. Uh, and the seller identified this, who had the original, as a microphone from WEEU reading Pennsylvania not Chicago. So that was useful information to have. Um, 
the uh, notice that uh, most, a lot of the originals were gone, or if they were original, I guess we're still trying to figure out the date. Uh, this one was uh, taken in 1939. It's dated the same time. But if you look at it, it looks as though it is the same group of people in the same pose, except that um, little Willie and Popeye move from the uh, outside to the floor. And you see Popeye's kazoo there also. Then I came on to this postcard, 1940, same bound outs, Arizona kid and his Texas Rangers still. Apparently the Arizona kid, whoever he was, uh, would produce either postcards or photos every year to commemorate his band, which was useful for me. Uh, notice that now most, almost everybody is gone that we saw before except for Popeye and apparently Pancake Liz is playing a, a marimba or a xylophone uh, on the far left and Popeye looks like he's playing his kazoo and finally I came up with this Arizona kid and the cowgirls dated 1941 noticed that most of all the guys are gone now it's a whole new crew and except for Popeye he's uh, still in there and the Arizona kid and also we have a ventriloquist which says that maybe they expanded their act a little bit and uh, so this was the end of images I could find and interestingly enough I looked in the I was able to look at the reading uh, newspaper the reading times um, and I found references to um, Oh, by they changed the name also. It's the Arizona Kid and his Cowgirls. Notice that two of the uh, women in the front have uh, adopted uh, fairly short uh, skirts, which presumably increased their market appeal to a certain segment anyway. Um, notice that um, this was the end I could find in terms of pictures, but then I, in the reading times, uh, I found references to this band, you know, like Arizona Kid and his Texas Rangers is playing tonight at so-and-so, just that kind of thing. And I found those between 1938 and 1941. So I've concluded that the postcard was printed in 1938. It looks like it was earlier anyway. And apparently that was about the time the band was formed, but there were no references to the Arizona Kid and his Texas Rangers outside that time period. All right, long, uh, long uh, winded thing there. All right, let's go to this one, another band postcard. The seller here, a French seller, indicated that this was a mother and her three children, and it was taken around 1930. What's the connection to Mickey Mouse, Mickey Jazz? Well, there was actually a, um, a Mickey film, Mickey cartoon, that was released in 1928 called The Jazz Fool. And I'm going to show you a tiny bit of that, but it doesn't sound like jazz as I would recognize it. Okay, so that was Mickey Jazz. That was the name of that cartoon. Now, why they would was that actually named after that cartoon? Was there another Mickey uh, Jazz out there and his ha name happened to be Mickey and they just put Mickey's image on there because it fit. Here's another cartoon I have, or sorry, a postcard I have. I don't have a date for it, but it was pretty early. But again, I've got Jazz BA with a four leaf clover and a Mickey. So I guess the question is, was there a Mickey Jazz? Was there actually a, uh, a grew, uh, some connection besides the jazz pool. I don't know. Um, another incidental Mickey's photographer taking pictures of children with Disney characters. Uh, this again looks to be pretty early. Uh, the stamp box is the Azo Kodak uh, paper. Um, I had the one, the card on the left for a long time, and probably a couple of years ago, I got the card on the right. Um, just an example of photographers taking these Disney. Uh, characters to places where people gather and then charging to let people have their child's picture taken with it. Another example, this is by Sunbeam Photo from uh, England. Uh, they're from Margate. This is, uh, these are all images of children focused, uh, sorry, photographed with a Donald doll, a very crude one, which makes it pretty easily recognizable between the, the images. The same company, uh, I, I have this card with where they photographed the child with Mickey. It's kind of a creepy postcard because it has Mickey teeth. Uh, whenever Mickey has teeth, it looks kind of creepy to me. And also it's kind of hard to see probably on your screen, but Mickey's being propped up by sort of some sort of wire or uh, wire frame or something. Likely this is 
this card may have been earlier than the ones I just showed you. They probably would have started with Mickey since Donald came along later. Uh, also, you see these incidental Mickeys. Here's some other examples with probably a commercial photographer taking pictures of children with Disney characters. Uh, on the left, you see down below uh, Pinocchio and Bambi. Uh, Pinocchio was uh, released in 1940 and Bambi in 1942. Uh, on the right, you see children taken with a Donald figure. Uh, again, Donald was 1930s, so it's hard to tell how old that was, but it probably was the 1930s. Also, you've got sort of personal photos where it looks like a photographer may have gone to where people lived or something and just took a snapshot of the child with uh, a Disney statue, a Disney toy of some kind or of um, uh, in any case, these are excellent examples of this. Uh, Disney uh, Mickey Mouse with these children. I, you know, I love these. These are great photographs. Uh, two other examples of children with Disney toys. Um, you can't read this on the postcard on the left, but it's embossed with the name of uh, the photographer in Amsterdam. Uh, the photographer turns out to be a uh, prominent Amsterdam portrait photographer and took quite a few uh, pictures of apparently of famous people or something. Uh, actually, I don't know if he was famous or not, uh, but I looked in all of my reference books and I couldn't find that Disney toy, which was kind of a surprise. And my wife helped too. Uh, she looked too and couldn't find it. On the right is another uh, postcard. This one, again, pretty early. Seller was in Vancouver and said that the postcard was taken in the early 1930s. I don't know if it was that early or not. I did find the shirt that the child is wearing. It was manufactured by um, Norwich Knitting. And according to what I read, this was a company that was about to go bankrupt until 1931 when it got the license to print Disney merchandise. And after that, it was uh, smooth sailing. Another, I jumped right on this one. I thought it was a great photograph embossed on it. You, you kind of read it as Zagreb, Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, so this was probably taken in Croatia. The time period, probably early 1930s. And the reason I think that, look in the background there, you've got hand-drawn uh, pictures of Mickey and of Pluto and of who? Horace Horse Collar. Now, Horace was a frequent appearer in cartoons between 1930 and 1932, and then he sort of phased out. So if you want to see what Horace looked like, not uh, covered up by a bunch of children, look at the postcard on the right. Again, another Seferides card. But if you're going to have a, uh, a children's party and put up the most popular, you'd want to do the most popular Disney characters, well, Horace Horse Collar, if that was one of the most popular, then it's a pretty early 1930s. Now, sometimes people dress up as Disney characters or not, and I will let you decide whether you think the first one on the left is intended to be Mickey or maybe Minnie. I don't know. It's pretty scary. The second one uh, on the left, I don't know. Uh, was that intended to be Minnie? I don't know. It's got, a, it's got many of the hallmarks that we look for, but it's not clear. The third one, the one that's in the middle, the face kind of matches. I don't know. I mean, the seller obviously on all these said they were Disney cards. I don't know if they were or not. Um, the um, one on the top right says dated 1931. That was actually from Croatia. Um, Split apparently is a city in Croatia. And that's you can read that very carefully. Uh, it's embossed on the lower left-hand corner of the uh, po postcard. And also there's another word there. I don't know exactly what it is. And so I've guessed at it. That's why there's a question mark. And finally, this one is the best. It's very clearly intended to be Mickey. And I, I just got this one last week. Uh, in fact, the card hasn't arrived yet. This is the scan from the auction site. Uh, but I contacted the seller and I asked what the background on this one was because it was written uh, 1938 on the back. And the seller was kind enough to reply and say that this card came from an album in Merzig, uh, Germany. Uh, apparently, the family loved Carnival with a K and would dress up every year. And in fact, the, the album had uh, pictures of the uh, family in costume that went back to 1907. And, and the family was uh, just uh, meticulous in recording the date. And either the date of the page was written down, it was shown on the page, these cards are all from this year, or the uh, postcard was dated on the back. And uh, this one was dated on the back. So I just thought that was, that was interesting.
Sometimes you have to look a little harder to find these incidental Mickeys. The one on the left is not too hard to find. It's on the tail and also on the nose of that uh, plane of that amusement ride. Uh, the one on the, the left was easy. The one on the right's a little harder. You might not spot it at first, so let me help you. It looks like there was a Mickey or possibly a Minnie on the front of the motorcycle. So these are the sort of uh, ones you have to look at a little harder. Now, this one wasn't too hard, but it's just another example of how pervasive Mickey was uh, at this time. They put it on a sailboat sail. This one was a hard one. I don't know if I would have even seen it if the seller hadn't called this out uh, in the auction. This is obviously a little later. It was probably 1960s. It's a, outside of my classic Disney postcard range, but it's still a fun one anyway to show you uh, sometimes how deep we dive into these. All right, where is Mickey? Well, if you look at the book, the little boy is reading, there's Donald's nephews on the book. So apparently uh, the uh, little boy is reading about uh, uh, Disney in some sense. And so that's an incidental Mickey and a very hard one to see. This one, uh, I do not know much about. Uh, basically everything I know is on the front of this card. I'm hoping somebody who knows something about the military history in France may speak up on it. Um, if we look at what's written there, uh, Citadel de Bichet, um, 15th May, 1938. I, I, I don't know, is this the Citadel in French? I think in 1938, it did uh, was owned by the French. I think they lost it in World War II and maybe gotten it back afterward. But um, the um, the fellow in the middle who looks maybe the commanding officer or most responsible person in the photograph has the number 153 on his hat and on his uh, collars. And then the suitcase at the bottom has a, a, a drawing of Mickey and Paris with three S's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know about that one. Anyway, I think it's a, it's a lovely card, very interesting, also very early. And it's, it's nice that it's probably dated. This one was just a fluke that I found. This one, the seller's name was something like Mickey 2461 or some number that had Mickey together with a number. And so it came up in my usual search for Mickey and postcard. So I took a look at it and I thought, well, I don't see any Mickeys. I started to go on and then all of a sudden I saw something. I'll give you just a second to look at it. See if you can spot it. Pinocchio is hanging from the lamp. So poor Pinocchio has been hung. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, but anyway, that was just a fluke that I even found that one because the seller didn't mention anything about Pinocchio or Disney at all. Um, and then I need research cards that need additional research. Here's a couple of cards postmarked maybe 1935 for one of them. Um, why is Mickey on this? And in fact, what is even being... Uh, what was, why did this seller think someone would buy this postcard? I don't know, but I can certainly see uh, putting Mickey on a postcard as being helpful to selling. Another card that needs some additional research is this one. I think it's a wonderful card. Again, probably from the 1960s, we've got a, maybe a child television or child actor, a child, maybe an entertainer of some sort, uh, together with Disney characters. Um, the back of the card says, or I'm probably not pronounced right, uh, Novi Sad. Novi Sad seems to be a city in Serbia. Then I came up with this card, don't worry about nothing. So when, um, when I got there, when I saw this on the auction site, I looked at it and I thought Mickey had been pasted on. And because you see this occasionally, you see cards that have Disney characters pasted on. And that wasn't the case at all. This actually was apparently photographed and then the printed Disney pasted to the print and then photographed again or something. That's all I can figure out. The uh, manufacturer was Devo Light Peerless. Um, I think they began publishing in 1950. They don't typically do funny cards, humorous cards. They seem to do a lot of um, you know, locations, but um, you know, scenes, landscapes. And so I have no idea. It was a great card though, I love it. Uh, and also who's the cat? I don't know who the cat is. If somebody recognizes it, maybe you'll put that in the comments because I've sort of wondered if that's another cartoon character I just don't recognize. Another great card. This one was W2XB General Electric's television station in Schenectady. Uh, began broadcasting 1928. I don't have a date. Don't know what this is about. I'd love to know more about this postcard. Why was it taken? If you blow it up, 
uh, if you zoom it in, you can see that there's a Disney toy uh, in front of this uh, young man. Uh, it might be the toy manufactured by Borgfeld, uh, who had a license from 1930 to 1938. And I've put up the reference uh, a reference picture of that particular uh, toy on the right so you can see it. Don't know much about it. Wish I knew more. Need, uh, need further research. I love this card. Uh, you hardly ever see adults with a Disney toy. This one is dated uh, 1 April uh, 1934. And on the back, it's the date is written along with the word Pache or Pache. Don't know. The only clue I have about this, and I'd kind of like to know if this is a famous person or just a photograph of somebody, may never know. The only clue I have is that the publisher's mark, which is a small, I'm going to call it a delta because I was a math major, but a small triangle at the bottom. That same publisher published a series of Snow White cards. They're very hard to find. They're hand colored and they have scenes that are not in some of the other cards. Seferides uh, and Superlux, which again, I'm probably just mispronouncing. Uh, both had series of um, Snow White cards that were 24 character, 24 cards long. They don't have this as one of the scenes, but there were some other scenes in this short series uh, that you just don't see anywhere else. Then here's the ultimate mystery card. I uh, don't know anything about this. There's some uh, uh, writing on the back. If you look carefully, you can see a couple of folks that look to be in Mickey Mouse headdress, head costumes of some sort. They're right standing in the front. And you can see all I know about it from the uh, uh, from the back. I don't know what that says. It looks like Fastig and Bad Wednesday. I don't know what it says. Uh, if anyone has any idea or recognizes any of this, let me know. I did zoom up the poor little girl who's holding the banners on the left. You can see the, some sort of a mark there. Uh, I assume that has something to do with this picture. Uh, also, in the very back center, there's something that looks like a postcard. Uh, no, sorry, a poster. And I've zoomed it up uh, and did what I could to sharpen it and clean it up. And it kind of looks like that. But that's all I can see right now. All right. Finally, um, these are some Christmas-themed cards. Uh, the a postcard on the far left was probably an older card that was rethemed by adding Mickey to it, the one in the middle. Um, I don't know if this is from a series or not, might be, uh, but you can see Mickey down there at the bottom and the uh, publisher has helpfully put a little book or something behind the Mickey doll so that you recognize it as Mickey. On the far right, a really beautiful card with gold highlighting and um, Mickey is in the basket there. And if you look at Mickey, if you zoom up Mickey, he does not look too happy about going to be some child's present. All right, that was incidental Mickey's. Now let me go take you quickly through the Japanese Disney cards, which is a very a relatively recent last couple of years interest of mine. I was accumulating them when I found them for a, number, for a while, but then the last couple of years, I'm actually trying to get them. Um, Japan is home to a very large, to many dedicated Des Disney fans. Uh, the uh, promotional flyer you see, I, I took from the book, uh, Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, The Ultimate Guide, The uh, Ultimate History. It's one of those Toshin books that weighs about as much as a small child. Uh, the poster was likely promoting the Jazz Fool, which I showed you a little earlier, but this was in 1929. So Disney got to Japan very early. This is an example, uh, I think a wonderful example of Japanese uh, pre-World War II uh, Disney postcards, Mickey postcard. You can see I really like the cards where there's some evidence of Japan, of Japan, Japanese customs in it. And so you here you see Mickey bowing to the little boy. The seller was kind enough to, as part of the auction, was to, to give some information about this card or I wouldn't know anything. Um, that means January 1st. I don't speak Japanese. Needless to say, or maybe not. Uh, Happy New Year is what that says. This is interesting. Postmark 1937. Why does it say 12? Well, that's during the reign of the Emperor Showa, and he reigned from 1926 to 1989. And so in his particular reign, this, this particular method of marking postcards begins with year one, 1926. So that may, means that year 12 is 1937. Uh, also, 1.1 means it was January 1, special cancel, which means it was mailed New Year's Day. And then the text at the top means postcard, Japanese. Another postcard I don't know very much about, thanks for the, the seller. I know something, once again, that means postcard, although it 
looks different than the one before. Uh, the animal that's running is a boar. I thought it was a cat, but it's a boar. The letter or the character that's on top of the, of the uh, boar is uh, the character Ni, which is short for Nitsumi, which is a rat. So what this is saying is that the year of the rat is chasing after or, or the uh, boar is leaving and the rat is following right behind. So the year of the rat follows uh, the rat year, follows the boar year. So likely this card was printed to commemorate 1936 as long as it was uh, pre-World War II. What is unexplained to me is why is Nick, Mickey standing on the top on one leg on an elephant that's also standing on two legs on some sort of pedestal? And why is the cat swinging a tennis racket? I don't know. Maybe somebody will tell me after this is over. This is another, another thing. I thought those were just I thought it was Mickey together with just some, you know, some sort of uh, figures. Uh, actually, I looked at it again. It was 1936. But the question in this case, why would you put 1936 on a card that's very clearly postmarked in 1931? 1936 must be a special year for some reason. Um, oh, well, maybe it was the 10-year anniversary of the emperor. Maybe. I don't know. Could have been. Don't know. Japanese uh, postcards sometimes have wonderful gold highlighting, and the cards, the two cards on the left, are from the same publisher. And oddly enough, I was a little leery when I first saw them. I mean, what's English doing on these cards? Um, Pre World War II, but they are, and they're legit. Um, gold highlighting, uh, especially the card on the far right with Betty Boop. Betty Boop shows up quite a bit in these early Mickey. Uh, postcards. Uh, perhaps she was put there just to in increase the saleability. If it has Mickey and Betty Boop together, maybe it's more saleable. Uh, here we have Betty Boop in different uh, forms. Um, I've wondered about the card on the right. What is the, you know, why are they carrying paddles? Um, I noticed the, there apparently, I don't know, is there a, like, is that like badminton or something? Is she playing badminton? Uh, if you blow up, uh, there's a figure sort of in between some of the uh, Japanese characters, perhaps Badman. Then this card came up. Uh, it was identified as, uh, the seller said it was pre-World War II Japanese. To me, it was a mystery card. And, and one of the things that really made it a mystery was I couldn't see from the seller on eBay what the bird was carrying. But I looked at that and I said, wait a minute, Mick, uh, Betty Boop is always in a dress. I mean, is she falling down? Is she jumping? Is she racing? What's going on here? But after I got the card, I looked at it and I pretty much concluded this needs to be the Olympics. And so if it's pre-war, that sort of narrows down when it is, sometime between 1928 and uh, 1940. Well, there's two Olympics there. I'll show you in a minute. Um, oh, here we go. 1932 or 1936. So which was it? Don't have any information on that until so a little later. Um, Olympics. Then this card came up. First time I ever saw Popeye together with Mickey on a postcard. And once again, the flag that Minnie is waving has five, looks like the five Olympic rings on it. 32 or 36. Then these cards came up. Okay, now I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the Olympics. Every one of these cards has some nod to the five rings. Uh, again, I don't speak Japanese. I, you, know, you sort of have to infer this from your research. Uh, another thing that's sort of uh, encouraging and troubling, the back of these cards all have a number on them, and apparently they're numbered consecutively. Uh, and the highest one I have is 16. The numbers I have are 2, 3, 6, 10, and 16. That suggests even if the series stopped at 16, there's 11 other cards out there that I probably don't have. I don't know whether the seller didn't sell them because they weren't Mickey or if there was something else uh, about them. I don't know. So continuing with my research, uh, I looked at the medals won in the 1932 and the 1936 Olympics. And sure enough, in the 1932 Olympics, Japan won the gold in the 100 meter backstroke and also in the equestrian, in, uh, in the equestrian uh, event. Uh, so that sort of led me to believe that these are probably from 1932, you know, probably commemorative because they knew who the winners were. So maybe published in 1933. But why do we have all these other cards that don't seem, because I looked at all the, all the medals down through uh, the silver and bronze and didn't seem that any of the, the cards I have uh, fit with those. 
Now, fortunately, <laughs> Hal put me in touch with a fellow by the name of David uh, Giacomini, and I probably mispronounced his name. I only talked to him by email, who's a longtime collector of Disney postcards. He can read Japanese. He confirms this was from 1932. It was published in 1933. It was the 1932 Olympics. It was a Japanese New Year card. It says Happy New Year on the front. And at the bottom, it says Dressage Jumping. And then he told me a little more. He said that uh, Takeishi Nishi, won the gold medal in individual jumping with this horse uh, Uranus. Uh, Nishi was the officer in the Imperial Army and famously commanded a tank unit during the Battle of Iwo Jima in 1945, as depicted in the movie Letters from Iwo Jima. So thanks to Hal for putting me in touch with David and David for the information. So that kind of resolves most of my misery, uh, misery, <laughs> mystery, it is misery. Um, but uh, I still, there's more to learn there. So I want to thank David for his help. Now we bring to the questions and I hope answer. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I have one more card. Now, this is my rarest and least expensive postcard. It's a Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, this is a fan card that, uh, okay, there, there's, there's been a maybe kind of subtle modification to it. Uh, as I said, it's the rarest because the only one in, in existence, and it's also the least expensive because no one would buy it, although maybe Hal would buy it. I don't know. Uh, but this is actually based on a real fan card that uh, you see it uh, uh, that you see all the time. And most uh, collectors don't like them because they're oversized. I think they're uh, five by seven. They're hard to store. And anyway, the subject matter is not that interesting. Here's what the card looked like originally before I did my violence to it. Okay, that brings me to the end. And uh, I wanted to work these cards in somewhere. These are Hegelberg Mechanicals, extremely hard to find and very rare. And um, I just wanted, I, I had a slide where they were in and I took it out. And I just wanted to get something in there. So that's all I got. Like getting a drink from a fire hose, wasn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at those wonderful mechanicals. Those are amazing. The eyes at the top one. Oh man. What would those be dated? Would they be also in the 30s, do you think? Uh, yeah, they would have been early 1930s. In fact, all of those images are available just as postcards. Oh. So they were, in fact, if you look at them, there are two layers. Uh, they, there's another blank card glued to the back. And uh, the mechanical part then operates inside of that. With the little push pull. Oh my God. Yes, yeah, some of them are push pull, and the one in the upper left is a wheel. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Golly. Um, Ray, I'm wondering if we have any questions or. Uh, any well, we have a couple of questions, uh, but um, a lot of statements more so than questions. Oh, good. Uh, we, we started off with somebody making a comment about. Uh, Mickey with teeth and how interesting that was to see. Uh, Terry is from Oklahoma, so he can be forgiven for mispronouncing the name of the city in Pennsylvania. It is ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Dolores uh, uh, commented that the research that, uh, that Terry has done has been spectacular, and I, I applaud that remark. Uh, this, this is indeed spectacular research. Uh, there was a question about, or a statement um, about the, uh, the panache card. Uh, yeah. I think it was Alan Peterson. No, that was Andrew Cunningham uh, suggested that that has a relationship to the season, Easter season. Uh, oh, okay, Alan, good. Alan Peterson uh, has made a remark about um, uh, the Olympics of, in 1940 were due to be held in Tokyo, but were canceled uh, for probably obvious reasons. Uh, yeah. Alan had another comment that I was unable to, to write. Alan, maybe you could um, unmute yourself and... Uh, and explain what that first comment was. It was about the camp card, um, the, the German camp card. Um, yeah, Terry, check out um, Camp de Bici, um 
that was a that was a military camp on the French German border, um, and that might be the 153rd Regiment. Um, th those insignia. Um, yeah, it, it's un. It it was a prisoner of war camp. They um, so uh, if that's but if that's 1938, I I don't know what that would be. But um, right. And Thank also you. that was Bad, Bad Wendorf is a German resort town or a spa town. Uh, Thank you. On a different, it was written in pencil on the back, I believe. Yes. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Well, uh, the, the only other thing that I have was that uh, this is a personal question. Uh, I was recently at the Richmond Postcard Show, and someone asked me about multiple baby postcards. I'm wondering if the uh, water babies by Valentine's, if you have a date on those. Um, yeah, I think I do. Um, let me see if I can go back. Well, you can email uh, me that, that separately. We won't tie everybody up with that. But yeah. uh, Valentine had a number or a. a, a um, I think, oh yeah, actually, uh, one of them, the uh, Water Babies published 1938, uh, probably second half, second quarter, uh, and the Mer Babies, uh, 1939. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's all except for a great big thank you and uh, thumbs up from both of us. <laughs> well, thank you so much for giving me this uh, soapbox to climb up on, and uh, I hope Actually, what I'm hoping is that I threw out some things that maybe will come back to me with more information because much of the stuff uh, I just don't know much about. And I appreciate all the uh, experienced people who've looked at this and now may be able to help me in my ongoing search. Well, I think that's going to happen, I hope. Um, thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody on uh, January 8th. And thanks one last time to uh, our speaker today, Terry Watt. Take care. Bye. See you, everybody.